Hi guys, today I'm gonna teach you how to make my Winter Bluff sweater. This is a top-down raglan sweater. It is knit in worsted weight yarn. It is very similar to my Fall Bluff sweater knit on super bulky weight yarn on nine millimeter needles. So if you are looking for a worsted weight version of my Fall Bluff sweater, this is very similar. It's a little different with the raglan increases and I also did some decreases on the sleeve with the Winter Bluff sweater. So that's just a little bit about the difference. Um, I, do, I do want to note I did start filming this tutorial, and just so you know, I film my tutorials before I write the patterns because I kind of design and film as I go. So I did start filming this video after I finished knitting the collar, um, and I did knit one setup row to get the raglan sti the stitch markers in place. If you need help learning how to cast on, join in the round, knit the ribbing and do the raglan setup round, please reference my fall bluff video first to get started and then you can jump back over to the winter bluff video. I have linked that video for you here, hopefully at the top and then also in the video description on YouTube. So if you're looking for where to find that tutorial, please reference the video description. I also wanted to note, I also wanted to show you um, one thing. When I did film my Fall Bluff tutorial, this one, I did start the round um, in between the back and the right sleeve. So that's one difference. When I filmed this, the beginning of the round starts um, between the right sleeve and the front up here. So that's just something to note the difference if you um, are jumping back and forth in between the videos. I also wanted to show you or tell you how to get this pattern PDF. I always get questions on where to find the pattern PDF. Um, I've got that linked right here as well in the video description. That link in the video description for the Winter Bluff sweater will take you to my website. Once you're on my website, there's a pink box where it says to enter your email to receive the free PDF. Once you enter your email in the box and you hit download, the page will redirect right then and there to a full PDF. You need to wait for the page to fully load before you print. A lot of times I hear people say that, that the pattern doesn't come through fully. Sometimes you need to reload the page. Let the PDF fully load before you print. Also wanted to just briefly mention how to read patterns if you are newer to reading knitting patterns. I have a size guide. The pattern is written with eight different sizes in mind, one through eight. If you are knitting a size three, you will always reference the third number whenever there is a listing of numbers out, right? So if it says to cast on a certain number of stitches and you're making a size three, you're gonna reference the third number listed, 108 in that, in that um, list of stitch counts. If you're knitting a size eight, you're gonna reference the eighth number in a list of numbers. So I just wanted to let you know that that's how you follow along in the patterns. Um, and um, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. And again, please note that I did not have the pattern written and finished as I was filming. I designed on the fly. So I don't really reference stitch counts too much because I figure that all out at the end. Just please reference the pattern PDF for your stitch counts and specific directions. All right, enjoy. All right, just wanted to go over everything you will need to knit the sweater. You're gonna need anywhere between four to six skeins of Woolies yarn. One skein is um, three ounces, 85 grams, 197 yards, 180 meters. So just take note of that if you're using different yarn. This is a considered a medium weight yarn, a worsted weight yarn. Um, the gauge is on five millimeter needles, 18 stitches to 24 rows. So just check your gauge. This yarn is 80% per uh, acrylic, 20% wool. Um, just note, I am not exact on my yarn estimations for skeins. Um, so just be sure to, to buy extra yarn just so you have enough. You'll need scissors. You will need a tapestry needle to even ends. You will need a tape measure. 
and you will need four stitch markers, one with a different color to denote the beginning of round, and then you will need um, five millimeter US 8 knitting needles in a lot of different sizes, 16 inch, 24 inch, and then 32 or 40 inch. So the 16 inches are for the sleeves and the beginning of the collar, and then um, 24 inch for um, the yoke, and then 32 or 40 inches to finish the yoke in the body. All right, so let's get started. So I started off um, with 16 inch, five millimeter needles with this yarn. And I've just kind of been playing around with how many stitches I cast on. I think I'm happy with this. But I cast on 108 stitches and divided it up into 44 stitches for the front and the back and 10 stitches for each sleeve. I went a little narrower on the sleeve. I don't want the sleeves to be quite as big um, on this sweater. So again, I cast on 108 stitches, 44 stitches for the front and the back, so that's 88 stitches, and then um, 10 stitches for each sleeve. So that's another 20 stitches. So that's 108 total stitches. So I cast it on. And I just used the simple long tail cast on. I did a knit one, purl one rib for, I believe it's eight rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, for eight rounds. Um, and then I did a setup round where I just knit one round all the way across, but I placed my markers um, for this. So. Um, this green stitch marker is the beginning of round, so I knit across 44 stitches, placed a marker, knit across 10 stitches, placed another marker, knit across 44 stitches for the back, placed a marker, and then knit to the end. So now I'm on my first raglan increase round, and I'm going to undo what I did because I started to do it already. But I'm going to do a left lifted increase, right lifted increase Um there, but I'm just going to show you what I do for the left lifted increase and the right lifted increase. So um, before I even knit a stitch, I am going to do um, a right lifted increase. So I'm going to knit or insert my right hand needle in the stitch directly below the stitch that's on the needle and just going to knit that stitch and then I'm going to knit the original stitch as well. All right, so then you knit across all the way across to the next stitch marker. All right, so I'm knitting all the way up to that knit next stitch marker. Once I've knit that, I'm going to insert my needle into the stitch that's two stitches below the stitch on the right hand needle and knit that slip the marker. This one I'm just knitting in the stitch that's directly below because we haven't actually worked that stitch yet. Okay, so then I knit that and then knit this stitch. So that is the left lifted increase followed by the right in left lifted increase. And then you just knit across the sleeve again. I'll show you this again. You knit the stitch, and then you work in the stitch that's two stitches below. You lift that up with your left hand needle, knit into it, slip the marker, knit one in the, pick up that stitch below. This can be a little tricky to do sometimes. and then knit this stitch, and then you repeat all the way across the back. All right, we're right up into the next stitch marker for the right sleeve. So you knit the stitch, and then you work in two stitches below the stitch you just knit, and you work that stitch. So that is called a left lifted increase. 
because that stitch leans to the left. It comes out to the left of the stitch you just worked. You slip the marker and then you do the right lifted increase, which is it leans to the right, insert our needle directly in the stitch below because we haven't worked that stitch yet. So in order to make them even, you have to kind of change what you're doing because we did the left lifted increase into a stitch we've already worked. So that's why we go down one more row. And then we do the right lifted increase in a stitch we haven't worked yet. So we don't need to insert our needle into a stitch um, at the same on the same row because we haven't worked it yet. So we just do one stitch below. And then you knit to the beginning of the round marker. All right. And you work that last stitch and then you do your left lifted increase. Again, it can be hard to lift that stitch and get your needle inserted in the right place. All right, so we finished our first raglan increase round and so now you're simply going to just knit one round. You knit one round all the way across and then you continue that same raglan increase row. So it's raglan increase row round followed by a knit round. And you're gonna continue that until you get to your desired sweater width. And I'm gonna show you how to calculate your sweater width um, to make sure it's as wide as you want using your own gauge, right? So, um, you know, yes, I will write this pattern out, but I, I really encourage people to kind of understand how sweaters are constructed so you can make them fit you and you can calculate how it's fitting you in your own gauge. Your gauge might be a little different than mine. So I'll tell you and show you how to calculate about how big your sweater width is before you divide for the body, um, just so you have an idea. I like to encourage people to not really just follow patterns blindly, but to understand how things are constructed. So if you do need to modify it, um, you can make sure it fits you. I hate to have people follow directions blindly and then go through and make an entire sweater and then have it not fit. That can be really, really frustrating. So I like to just kind of provide the foundation for simple sweaters um, and then teach you how to make it fit, teach you how to modify it and help you kind of understand how it's made so you can um, make sure it fits you and make it make it the way you want. So we're going to continue on um, as you, you know, when you do an increase round, you increase eight stitches. So you will need to move to a longer needle when the stitches don't fit comfortably onto um, this 16 inch needle any longer. So I will show you how to do that. You literally just take your second needle and knit the stitches off of this needle onto the other one. But I know some people get confused with that. So um, once I get to a few more increase rounds, I'll show you how to switch the needle onto a longer needle. All right, so when you have a ton of stitches on your needle, when you've done a lot of raglan increases and you wanna to move to a longer needle, you simply, um, I usually do this on a knit row and not a raglan increase row, just because it's less to keep track of. And I usually just start the round a few stitches um, so I don't lose the stitch marker. I pull this yarn up a little bit and I just start knit, take my second needle and simply just start the work. And I, since this is a knit round, I'm just simply gonna knit all the way around and continue as I normally would um, and move all of the stitches off of the 16 inch needle to my longer needle. So that's all you do. You simply just start putting all of the stitches on the 16 inch needle onto your longer needle on, the, on your right hand. So you work off the 16 inch to onto the longer one. And this just allows you to knit more comfortably. You can start to see the work come together. Um, and you just wanna make sure you have a size that's not too long or too short. Um, I think this is a 36 incher. I don't think it's a 24 incher. Um, but I think I, I will have 
uh, enough stitches to fill this out. So normally you move from like a 16 inch to a 24 inch. Honestly, I can't find my 24 inch right now. Um, so I think I've expanded to the point where I'll be fine on this, I think is less than a 36. I think it's a little shorter. Honestly, like I don't get circular needles. I was told they are measured from end to end, from tip to tip on the needle, but they never quite are, <laughs> they never seem like they're very consistent. Um, so if I like order two different 36 inch or whatever, um, 32 inch, they, they seem to all be different lengths, but I just kind of eyeball it and, and make sure the stitches will fit okay on the needle. So I'll just show you what this looks like in a second once I've knit all these stitches off. So I just want to show you um, the, the work starts to spread out a little bit. You can see that this is my longer needle over here. I still have these stitches on the 16 inch needle and I'm just continuing to work all the way around. It's cool to see um, once you get onto the longer needle, it's fun to see your work because it's expanded a little bit more. Just showing you here, whoops, um, I'm at the end of the round and now I will start my raglan increase round and just finish off um, knitting these last two stitches um, from my smaller needle. So um, there we go. So now I have finished taking everything off the smaller needle and I'm ready to continue on with my raglan increase rows on the larger needle. One thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is um, how to make sure you are making your sweater the desired width and circumference you want. So basically, what I like to do is take a sweater that I have that I like that fits me well. This is a Banana Republic kind of just simple, straightforward sweater, but I really like how it fits me. It's a little bit bigger, but not like crazy big on me. It's a size small, but I'm just going to measure the width of it here um, just so I know how wide to make my own sweater. So it measures about 21 inches wide. So that's 42 inches in circumference. So I am going to knit my sweater, my raglan, and make raglan increases until I get to about a 42 inch circumference. So I'm gonna show you how to figure that out. All right, so I just wanted to explain to you guys what to do to figure out if your raglan sweater is wide enough, is basically your desired circumference, because you can continue raglan increases until your desired width. So I'm just gonna show you some really really simple math. I promise it is not that hard. So basically you take your gauge. This is your gauge, 18 stitches for four inches. You can also do this in centimeters. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be in inches. And you need to figure out how many stitches you need for 42 inches. So it's just a simple ratio. So you solve for X by doing 18 times 42 over four. And when you do that, 18 times 42 divided by four. All right, when you do that, X equals 189 stitches. So that's how many stitches you need total to get to about 42 inches in width. Now, obviously 189 isn't the best number because um, it doesn't work out evenly. So basically you need to have your front stitches plus your back stitches, plus your underarm cast on stitches. So you have to take that all into account to get to that 189 stitches. So I basically like to just take that 189 number and divide it by two. So that's about 94.5 stitches if I cut it in half, if I, if I take that 189 and divide it by two, 94.5. So I will probably, you know, if I, I am about at the point where I am around 90 stitches for my front and my back, so then I'm kind of at the point where I'm gonna stop because my cast on stitches will probably be between four and six stitches at the underarm for each side. So basically you just need to figure out how wide you need to get the back 
And you can play around with how many raglan increases you do and how many underarm cast on stitches you make. But that's just kind of the overall general math to figure out if your raglan sweater is as wide as you need it to be to get to be your desired circumference. So that's what I did um, when I designed the sweater to figure out how wide to make it. Okay, so I am going to do my last raglan increase round and I just wanted to show you one more time what that right lifted increase looks like and what that left increase left right lifted increase looks like and left lifted increase looks like all right so if i'm starting at the beginning of the round and this is a raglan increase round i do a right lifted increase which means i insert my right hand needle in the stitch below and i knit that and i knit the actual stitch itself so i've just increased a stitch then you knit all the way around to the next stitch marker. Okay, so I've knit across the front stitches, all the way across the front to that next stitch marker. And now I'm going to knit all the way up to that stitch marker. Whoop, keep the stitch marker on your needles. And now we are gonna do a left lifted increase and it's a left lifted increase because it the stitch leans to the left or on the left side of the stitch so we've already knit the stitch so we're going to insert our needle underneath not the step not the not the stitch you just knit not the stitch below but the stitch even below that so you are going to insert your needle here and now you will just knit into that stitch. So now you've increased a stitch that leans to the left. So you're going to slip the needle and now do that right lifted increase. But this time it is in the stitch directly below here. It is not in the stitch down one more round because we haven't knit this stitch yet. Okay, so um, it can be a little confusing, but it'll look the same after you knit the stitch. So you knit that stitch below you knit the stitch and um, it all works out because you can't go down as far as you did the first time around on the left lifted increase because you haven't actually knit the stitch. Okay, so when you do the left lifted increase, you kind of go two stitches below where you are. When you do the right lifted increase, it's one stitch below. And now you just repeat that until you get to the last marker and you will do the final um, left lifted increase. So I'm going to continue all the way around doing my increases on either side of the stitch marker like I just showed you um, until I get to the beginning of round marker where I will do my final left lifted increase. Okay, I've knit all the way around doing left lifted increase and, and right lifted increases around each stitch marker and now I'm back to the beginning stitch marker and I am going to do my final left lifted increase and be done with my raglan increase rounds. Now we will begin to divide for the body. Okay, so it's time to divide for the body. And it's easiest to divide for the body when you have finished a raglan increase row or round and you are ready to just do a knit round. So one thing though before we get going here on the raglan increases is I just want to tell you how many raglan increase rounds I did and what my final stitch count is before I divide for the body and separate the the sleeves out. So again, I will write out a pattern, but I encourage you to figure out how wide you want your sweater to be and go to the length you want. Um, all right, so I started with 44 stitches for the fronts and the back and 10 stitches for each sleeve. I did 23 raglan increase rounds and that means I have increased 46 stitches for each section because there are two increases per round in each section. So I have a total of 90 stitches for the front 
and the back. And I have 50 stitches for each sleeve, for each sleeve. So again, 50, uh, 90 stitches for the front and 90 stitches, for, this is the front and this is the back, and then 56 stitches for each sleeve. So um, our stitch marker is in between the right sleeve and the front of the work. So just to kind of tell you how this works when we divide for the body, our goal is just to remove the sleeve stitches from our circular needle and connect the front and the back. And we connect the front and the back by casting on a few extra stitches at the underarm as well. All right, so we are going to knit across the front normally. I am, um, Make sure you keep your stitch marker here. So we're going to knit across the front of the sweater normally. And I will meet you back here once we get to the, the next stitch marker to denote the beginning of the left sleeve. All right, so I've knit across the front. I'm about to hit the left sleeve. So I'm going to knit up into the stitch marker. I'm going to remove the stitch marker. And now I'm going to use the backwards loop, cast the backwards loop method to cast on four extra stitches at the underarm. And this is what will literally join the front and the back of the work. And it's good to add on some stitches there to give you some just space at the underarm. So that's one stitch and you literally just make a backwards loop. Two, three, four. Okay, so those are your underarm cast on stitches. We're gonna drop that, let that be for a minute. You're gonna take your scrap yarn that you've got. You're gonna want a piece of scrap yarn that will fit all of the sleeve stitches on plus some so they have some room here. So now you're just going to remove the sleeve stitches from your left hand needle onto the tapestry needle and the waist yarn. And this will allow us to save these stitches to be knit later for the sleeves. So we just need to push all of these sleeve stitches carefully off of the knitting needle onto this piece of waist yarn. This waist yarn basically just acts as a holder so we can come back and put these stitches back on a circular knitting needle or double pointed needles later to knit. So we're gonna take all of these off and these sleeve stitches go all the way into this next marker. So I'll meet you back here once I get all these on. All right, so I'm almost done getting these sleeve stitches onto my piece of waist yarn. I'm gonna remove that marker. And now I'm just gonna pull the waist yarn through here and just let the stitches kind of rest nicely on this piece of scrap yarn. So you can just pull it out a little bit. And now we're gonna take our left hand needle and our right hand needle and join the work. And now you can see that there is your sleeve off the needle and now you can just knit the back of the work as you would normally. So you just continue to knit like this. And it might be a little loose um, at the beginning for the first round or two, and that's okay. We can go back and seam our underarm gaps. Um, there are different methods to join the work. I like to do things kind of as simple as possible. Um, and I don't mind going back and seaming my underarm gap. So we're gonna knit across the back here until we get to the next stitch marker. Okay, so I've knit across the back to the next sleeve here, and um, I am going to, once I get to the marker, um, I will remove that marker We'll do our four underarm cast on stitches, but this time we need to put a marker. I did two stitches. Now I'm gonna do um, a stitch marker here to denote the new beginning or end of the round here in the middle of the underarm cast on stitches. So now I need to cast on two more stitches here. So we've done, we're done with our underarm cast on stitches. Now we need to get these sleeve stitches, these last sleeve stitches 
off of our needles. So we will just simply do the same thing as we did before and slip these stitches off of our needles and get to our other, our original beginning of round marker. This will be our new beginning of round marker, um, but we will work to get our sleeve stitches off until we get to our old beginning of round marker. All right, so I'm almost done getting these sleeve stitches off of our needle. I'm going to remove that original beginning of round stitch marker. I'm going to pull the yarn through and get those stitches kind of situated comfortably on the piece of waste yarn. Now you can just fold the work and join the needles. We have our new beginning of round marker on and now we're just simply going to knit to our desired length from the underarm. So now I just wanna take a second and show you what our sweater is looking like now. Now it actually kind of, I know I have it upside down, but um, it kind of looks like a sweater now. You've got your sleeves on your piece of waist yarn separated out from the body. And now we will just be working um, in the round, just knitting and slipping that beginning of round marker. I do want to show you what it looks like to knit those underarm cast on stitches because those look a little different. So once I get around to the other side, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm getting to my first, um, where I first cast on those stitches, the first round underneath those cast on stitches. And this can be a little wonky, it can get a little loose, and you have to make sure you insert your needle the right way into the stitch. It might seem like it's really loose. It'll tighten up, and then again, if you have gaps, we can see them later. You're gonna wanna insert your needle as if you're just knitting a normal stitch here, and then just knit it. But you just gotta be careful to not drop that stitch. You can just, if you do drop it, you can twist it back on but just carefully knit those underarm cast on stitches. Um, and you do a backwards loop because you need to be able to insert the needle into a twisted stitch. So it does look a little different initially at that underarm and it will seem, again, it'll seem like it's a little loose here with this gap. That's normal. It will tighten up as you keep knitting. And like I said, we can go back and um, tighten up our stitches as we go. But that's how you knit into those underarm cast on stitches. So I'm gonna knit some length here. I'm, um, and then I'll, I'll come back and, and show you how long I've knit the sweater. But this is where you can really customize the length. And usually with sweater patterns, um, we measure the body length from the point of the underarm cast on stitches. So um, that's where you start to measure your sweater length. So um, I will meet you back here after I've knit some body length and am ready for the bottom ribbing. But what's great about top down raglan sweaters is you can try it on. You can move um, all your stitches on the needle onto a piece of waist yarn or half the stitches onto a piece of waist yarn so you can fit it over your head and get it over your body comfortably, but you can see how it's fitting you to determine how long you want your sweater to be. So like I said, I'll meet you back here after I've got some length on the body. All right, I wanted to show you guys what to do when you need to join um, your next skein of yarn. So when you've got a tail, like enough to knit about four stitches, you can take your second skein here and um, you're gonna wanna hold the yarn like this and you're gonna treat this double yarn as if it were one. And this just basically weaves in that extra end. You're going to knit about four stitches with both yarns held together, then you will see the tail from the new piece and you will then drop the tail from the old piece when you are done finishing knitting those stitches. And then you just continue knitting along the way. And when you go back, 
and you knit these double stitches, you treat them as one stitch. So you'll insert your needle into both of these stitches and treat them as if they were one when you come back around on the other side. So that is just a quick way to join yarn without knots. Um, you won't even tell when you continue knitting that you've got a double stitch there for a little bit and you can just trim those ends. I wanted to show you kind of where I am so you can see how far I got with um, two skeins of yarn. So um, I just joined my third skein. So I'm about six inches down from the body here. Um, so that was just two full skeins of this Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn. So just wanted to give you a little bit of reference here. So now I'm just starting my third skein of yarn. So wanted to show you what it looks like to join your yarn. That's how I join my yarn. There's lots of different methods. I find that's the easiest way. Um, I will see you back here when I am done knitting the body and I'm ready to do the bottom ribbing. All right, so I have finished the length of the body to the point where I want it to be. And for me, that was at about, um, about 10 inches from the underarm cast on. Um, and the bottom ribbing will add about an inch and a half. Um, so, you know, you can try the sweater on, see how it's fitting you. Just make sure you account for how long the bottom ribbing will add to the sweater. So when you move to the bottom ribbing, um, and you can see, I just did a stitch marker halfway, the halfway point. So I knew how much longer to go. Um, so when you start the ribbing, you knit to the beginning of round marker and you simply just slip the marker and you're going to start that knit one purl one all the way around knit one purl one and you're going to want to um, continue the one by one rib the knit one purl one rib for um, just under an inch and a half or so. And then we will bind off in the knit one purl one pattern. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So just continue knitting one, purling one. And then when you get back, just knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches, and your ribbing should look similar to this. Um, and I, again, just continue until you get to just under about an inch and a half. Um, the whole goal is to make the bottom ribbing an inch and a half. So you'll just need to account for that last row, that last bind off row. And um, I will meet you back here when we are ready to bind off in the one by one rib after I've completed um, just under an inch and a half of this one by one rib on the bottom. All right, so I have finished the bottom ribbing for about an inch and a half, and now it is time to bind off. And to bind off, I'm just doing a simple bind off. Let me just finish this round here. Um, there are many different ways to bind off. Um, this is kind of a standard way. Some people's criticism about the way I'm gonna show you is that it can be a little tight. So I tend to try to do this a little bit more loosely. So you'll continue in pattern and knit one, purl one, and then you're going to just slip that first stitch over that stitch you just knit. And then you continue in the pattern knitting and binding off as you go along. So you'll always have one stitch on your right hand needle and again, just try to keep the bind off a little on the looser side here. And um, like I said, this is kind of a standard bind off, but there are many other ways to bind off. Um, I like how this starts to look. It's um, kind of a clean, neat edge there. So continue all the way around, just binding off in the pattern and I will show you what to do when you have one stitch left.
Okay, so I am nearing the end here of my bind off. A few more stitches left. I just wanted to show you what to do. When you get to the end and you've got your last stitch on there. So I'm gonna work all the way to the last stitch and then I'm gonna bind off and I've got one stitch left. I am going to grab my scissors and leave a little tail because we can weave that in later. And then you simply just pull the yarn through and it'll look a little funky. We will go back and seam up this end here, connect it to the original stitch and weave it up here. I like to do all of my weaving in at one time with my tapestry needle. All right, so we've got our body done. Um, and now it's time to knit the sleeves. So take your 16 inch circular needle, five millimeter circular needle or whatever knitting needle you are using. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just place all of the stitches that are on your scrap yarn back onto your needle. So I'm simply going to put my needle back through all these stitches. Some people like to kind of take out the stitches as you go. I usually just get all of the stitches on the needle and pull the yarn out kind of on at the end, whatever you feel like doing. So just simply move all of these stitches back onto this needle or onto this needle. They were never on this needle before. Um, so we are just getting ready to knit the sleeves. So once I have got all of these on, we'll pick up stitches at the underarm cast on. So I'll see you back here once I get all of these stitches back uh, onto this circular needle. All right. I'm almost done getting these stitches back on the needle and then when we're done, be careful, make sure you get the last couple stitches. These tend to get pulled really tight and so it can be hard to see these and get these on, but just make sure you've got all of your stitches back on the needle. And there we go. All right, so I usually just push all my stitches back to the kind of the um, elastic part here and then, or the cable. Um, and then I just pull the yarn all the way through there. Okay, so now we're gonna take our yarn that we, ha that we were using and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna pick up those stitches at the underarm that we cast on and join in the round and also place a stitch marker to denote the beginning and end of the round. So we're going to join the yarn here on the right side of the work here. You're gonna take your tail from the yarn and I cast on four stitches, so two stitch, so after two stitches in the middle of those cast on stitches, I'm going to place a stitch marker. So you can see that I've got these four, one, two, three, four kind of ridges here. I'm gonna insert my needle through that first ridge and the back stitch to pick up and knit these stitches on the underarm. So you just insert your needle and pull that through. This will hang off the back a little bit. You might wanna hold it so you don't pull it through. And um, I'll show you again kind of where I go through to pick up stitches. So that first little notch there in the back and you put your yarn over the needle and you pull it through. So I've got, I've picked up and I've knit two stitches there at the underarm. I am going to place my stitch marker here at the center of those 
cast on stitches and I still have two more stitches to pick up here. And I'm going to insert my needle again into that stitch and this stitch back here and pick up a knit. It's just called pick up and knit because you actually have a new stitch. You've created a new stitch by picking up that loop. And then the last stitch here. All right, so we've pick up and knit four stitches there. You can pull this yarn a little tighter in the back if you need to. And now we're simply going to keep knitting. There are lots of different techniques that people use to kind of close up this gap that you get when you simply just start knitting. Um, like I said earlier, I usually just go back with a needle and at the end, when I have to weave in these ends anyway, I just kind of seam up the holes. There are lots of different ways you can um, pick up stitches around the armhole to close up those gaps, but that's I don't do anything fancy. My goal with this video is just to keep it straightforward. So you usually will get a gap, you know, in between those four cast on stitches and the beginning and the end of the work. And that's okay. We'll just go back and weave in our ends and seam up those armhole gaps. The same. All right, so I'm gonna reduce um, stitches every inch and a half or so. Okay, and I will show you what that looks like, how to reduce stitches. So based on the size that you're making, you will just follow the instructions. I just wanna show you how to reduce, um, again, like I'm, I haven't designed the full pattern yet. I kind of design this as I go and I write up the pattern. I'm just gonna show you generically how I reduce stitches and you can follow the pattern based on what you are knitting. So once I've knit about an inch and a half from the underarm, I'll show you how to reduce stitches. So I will see you back here after I've knit about an inch and a half. Okay, so with the sleeves, you keep knitting to, um, in the round and um, you're going to be decreasing, you know, refer to the pattern. Um, you're going to be decreasing every um, like inch or inch and a half or um, whatever the pattern calls for. I'm going to go uh, every kind of inch and a half here. Um, and I'm going to show you what to do to decrease. So basically, we're making the sleeve smaller so that our cuff is um, tighter around the wrist than it is at the top of the sleeve. So I'm designing this sweater to do a gradual decrease um, as we go. So when you start the round, you're gonna want to knit one stitch, all right? And then we're gonna simply just do a knit two together. So you just knit two stitches at the same time. Okay, and then you're gonna knit all the way around the sleeve until you have three stitches left. So I'm gonna just continue knitting here all the way around until I have three stitches left and then I am going to do um, another decrease. I'm gonna do a slip slip knit. So it's knit two together, knit around, slip slip knit when you've got three stitches left and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm almost at the point where I've got three stitches left in the round here and now I'm gonna do a slip slip knit. Slip slip, knit, okay? And the reason, I just wanted to show you, we do a knit two together on this side and a slip slip knit on the other side is because the stitches start to kind of angle in like this. When we do a, um, a knit two together, the stitches kind of go this way. When we do a um, slip slip knit, the stitches kind of go like this. So it, it um, you'll see as it starts to come together, um, uh, that it looks a little bit nicer when you um, do it this way. So basically you are reducing two stitches, you know, every inch and a half or so. So I'm just gonna continue in this manner. I'm gonna knit straight stack a net for another inch and a half or so and then reduce two more stitches. So you can just continue on into this fashion until you get to the desired arm length you want minus about an inch and a half for the cuff. 
So I'll check back in here with you in a little bit and show you what it's looking like. All right, so I've completed my sleeve um, and I have reduced nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I knit another inch and a half past that last decrease to get to my desired length before the cuff. Um, but I just wanted to show you once you've knit to the length that you want before you get to the cuff, um, you just start the knit one, purl one, um, and you're going to continue the knit one, purl one, and complete the sleeve cuff just as you did the bottom ribbing but your stitch count is obviously a lot smaller and it is a little bit more difficult to work on 16 inch circular needles so you can use dpns if you would like i'm not going to show go through all of this again for you you can just go back and reference what we did for the bottom ribbing um, and how to bind off there. Just note that I've got chapters marked in the video, so you can easily click on the chapters to see how to bind off or how to do that knit one, purl one in the round, but we just continue to knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches um, for just under an inch and a half, and then you bind off in that pattern in the knit one, purl one, pattern and bind off as you go lifting that first stitch over the second stitch. Um, so that's what we do to finish the sleeve and once we are done with the sleeve I will show you how to weave in the ends. All right now that you're done with this sweater I just wanted to show you how to um, weave in the ends and kind of finish off the sweater so you can thread your tapestry needle with the tail um, and this is a sleeve cuff and you're just going to want to kind of connect the um, th where you ended with the tail to the beginning of the work and there are many different ways to do this that's just kind of how I weave it back together and then um, I just kind of weave in my ends by working up the side of the stitch like this. And the goal is to follow the stitch so it kind of remains invisible and you won't see it on the other side. So you can pull that through and stretch it out a little bit and then just snip it. And then I just wanted to show you also how to um, seam up any armhole gaps at the underarm. I, you know, I don't, there's no exact science for this, um, but you can see on the right side here, I've got a little bit of an armhole gap here. So I am going to thread the needle here, the tapestry needle, and then I'm going, whoops. That's not how you want to thread the tapestry needle. And then you're going to want to kind of um, insert your needle around the outside of the work and go around. and go through and then you can just kind of weave the yarn through um, another spot and follow the work around and kind of pull it a little bit and cut the yarn. So that's how you weave in the ends. So you just continue doing that for um, the rest of the ends you've got. And you're done with your sweater.